Happy New Year. today by taking you back to uh, July 1985. I like books, I like movies, I like a good story. And uh, July of 1985, there was a movie released called Back to the Future. It was the first part of a trilogy. There's a picture starring Michael J. Fox, who plays uh, a young man named Marty McFly. That's his friend, Dr. Emmett Brown. He's affectionately known as Doc. And uh, he invents a time machine. He invents a time machine out of a, out of a DeLorean. And uh, there's a lot of characters, there's a lot of plots, but uh, through the course of these films, uh, initially they're in 1985, they go back to November 5th of 1955. And uh, Dr. Brown, he, if you remember this, if you've seen this, he created something called the flux capacitor. And this is what makes time travel possible. So when Marty's back in 1955, he has an encounter with a younger version of his parents, and this, these uh, encounters, they alter the course of things. So he has to encourage his father. He has to build him up to ask his mom out on a date to, to just correct the order of things. So it has, uh, it has a good ending. He makes it back uh, to 1985, but he later learns there's, there's some things going on with his children down the road. So the second installment, he has to go to the year 2015. And uh, so uh, through these movies... Uh, there's a lot of twists and a lot of turns, uh, but one thing I think uh, we, we all probably would like at some time is to have access to a time, time machine, have access to the DeLorean. Maybe there's some moments in our past we would like to revisit, some great moments. Uh, maybe there's some things, uh, like in the case of Marty McFly, we would want to do differently, make some different choices, make some different decisions. And I also contend that many of us would like to take a look ahead and see how things turn out, see what happens. And uh, in light of the last two or three years, there has been so much that has uh, transpired. We've, we've dealt with a lot. Uh, we've come out of a global pandemic. There's been political unrest. Uh, we've, uh, we've had a, a war in Ukraine, kind of a messy withdrawal from Afghanistan, an attack on the U.S. Capitol. Uh, there, there's been all kinds of things. Right now there's tension in the South China Sea between superpowers with the United States and China. Uh, all of these things are, are going on. And I think it begs the question, what's next? What's next? Uh, what's, what's going to happen? Uh, some people are waiting for the other shoe to drop. So I just want us to think about that. I know it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to process. And this can bring some anxiety. It, it causes concern. It can cause us to worry. And, um, you know, a lot of times we're coming back. What's next? What's going to happen as we move into the new year? But uh, this morning I would ask that you would turn with me to Romans chapter 8 because the Apostle Paul, he has such an important message for us. Uh, during the first century, they too were in a period of uncertainty. There was hardship. There was persecution. There were many trials. Uh, but this is uh, what a great passage. It's a victory passage. Uh, and if you are in Christ Jesus this morning, we have so much to praise God for and so much to um, just, just to uh, look ahead uh, with. So I'm going to start in verse 31, and I'll wrap up around verse 39. So uh, the Word of God uh, reads, uh, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons... Neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us 
from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. If you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, you're in Christ, we, we can deal with the what's next question. We can move ahead, we can rise above, we can overcome barriers and hurdles thinking about the new year, whatever uh, may happen. So I want us just to talk about that a little bit today. And the first thing I would share with you is this, is that we need to rest in Christ. We need to rest uh, in Christ. It's interesting, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I just like to say that, <laughs> rest. It sounds good. And when Jesus talks about that, if, if you're weary, uh, you've been working hard, you're exhausted, you have a lot of fatigue, you just need to recover. You need to be rejuvenated. You need rest. About that part where he talks about being burdened. You know, that has to do with sin, wrongdoing, transgressions, iniquity. Uh, and, and we all know this, uh, whether it's guilt or shame, or remorse, just the weight of that. But Jesus said, you just bring all that. He says, come to me, all of you, and I will give you rest. That's what Paul, he drives home in Romans chapter 8. He says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What can separate us uh, from the love of Christ? He mentions, he talks about the worst of circumstances. He says, nothing can separate and he says also that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors uh, in Jesus. Uh, so we can rest in that. We can rest in, in that because our identity is in him. Our identity is in Jesus. As Epp shared this morning through a beautiful song, Austin mentioned in the communion meditation, and Anita started from the outset with the welcome. Whatever has happened in your past, in my past, we may have skeletons in the closet, we may have done things that we're not proud of, but with Jesus, we have a new beginning. We have a fresh start. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You're a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. We have a new beginning in Jesus. We can rest in that. What about that? We can rest in our identity uh, being in Christ Jesus. The second part I can tell you in terms of resting in Christ is that we have an inheritance. We have an inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. Um, we have something to look forward to. So if I'm, I'm out of the picture and, and this old body wears out and I'm gone, guess what? I'm going home. I'm going home. You're going home if you're in him. We have an inheritance. Um, in my personal study recently, I've been in Revelation. And I, I've, I've, I've been going through that, chewing on that, praying uh, through it. And when you get to the last chapter of the last book of the Bible, which is Revelation chapter 22, talks about our inheritance, talks about what's ahead. And uh, that we're going to see his face. We're going to see the face of Jesus. We're going to enjoy an intimate relationship that is so hard to conceive. Uh, we're going to enjoy some of that fruit from the tree of life. I imagine we're going to drink some water uh, from the river of life. We're going to serve him. We're going to serve him uh, for all of eternity. And I love verse 5, Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. You know what it says? That God, his people are going to reign forever and ever with him. You're in Christ. You can rest in that. You're a winner. You're on the winning side. You're victorious. You're triumphant. That's, that's who he is. So all of these things going on, it, it, can cause so, it, it can cause worry, and it can cause restlessness, and it can, it can cause sleepless nights. But I know this. He says right here in, in, in this chapter, of verse, uh, verse 32 of chapter 8 of Romans, that he did not spare his own son. How can we doubt the goodness of God? Can't speak for you, man. God has been good to me. God has been good to me. Uh, so when I think about uh, Jesus, it says that he is interceding for us at the right hand of the Father. So our Master, our Lord, our Savior, 
our healer, our redeemer, our refuge, our fortress, our portion, our reward is right at the right hand of the Father, and he's intervening, and he is interceding for us, and we can rest in that. Do you like that? I do. You can rest in that. Um, I read a book recently, and I've, I've been into this killing series for a while with Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard, and it talks about a lot of historical figures, but the book I read recently is, is titled Killing the Legends, and it talks about the life of Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. It talks about John Lennon, who is a big part of perhaps the greatest rock band of all time, the Beatles. And then Louisville, Kentucky's own Muhammad Ali. And uh, these guys had illustrious careers. They were successful. They were at the hump, the summit. They had achieved uh, amazing heights and uh, very charismatic uh, figures. And... Um, they obviously have a legacy in terms of their, their areas of excellence. But um, they also had their, their shortcomings. They're human beings just like us. They had their pitfalls. And, but one of, this is one of the, as much as I marvel at their accomplishments, it was, a, it was one of the saddest books I've read in a long time. And I, I just, I, I came away with thinking a lot of these men were taken advantage of. They had really shady business managers, people that just, they kind of ran them into the ground in order to satisfy and gratify their, their own selfish desires. And at the very end of the book, Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard had this to say, and I, I think this applies to where we are in society, and we have to all uh, be careful with this. But here, here's a quote um, at, at the very end. He says, they allowed others, listen to this, they allowed others to dictate how their lives would evolve. Let that marinate for a second. They allowed others to dictate how their lives would evolve. So they were being told to do these things. They were getting bad counsel. They were getting bad advice. And they just, they just, they, they just took that. They just ran with it. And I think about, I'm not throwing a stone at John Lennon or Elvis or Muhammad Ali or any of those guys. But I'm thinking, how many times are, are we getting information? There's information that's disseminated. It's what we watch. It's what we read. It's who we're listening to. And are we allowing those voices, are we allowing that information to dictate how our lives will evolve, how they're going to go, how they're going to change? That's something we really have to take self-inventory with. I know this much. I think we all can agree on this. There's a lot of misinformation today. Can we agree on that? There's fact-checking. What? Misinformation. Uh, there's disin this, this is not like a political thing I'm trying to say. This is bipartisan. There's misinformation. There's disinformation. There's lies. Do you know one of the most popular words in 2022? You know what it was? Gaslighting. What's that? What, what's gaslighting? Well, it's not just it's lighting a fire or something. It's, it's, it's when you're misleading someone into doubting reality. You're misleading someone into doubting reality. Think about that in all of the areas that plays out in our lives. I know this much. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord does what? It stands forever. It endures forever. We have to be very, very careful on what we're listening to, who we're following, what we're watching, and, and what we're uh, allowing to drive the course of our lives. Because the same way as those, those men, at least according to uh, O'Reilly and Duggar, they allowed others to dictate how their lives would evolve. That, that is the, the exact opposite of what Paul is resting in. He's walking in, he's comforted with, he's confident in, okay? He's resting in. But if we want to deal with the what's next question, and we want to be productive and effective, we have to rest uh, in Jesus, okay? Second thing I would share with you this morning is this, is that we need to fulfill our calling by loving people. Fulfill our calling by loving people. So I'll just... I use myself here. 
um, how am I doing in terms of loving God, my Lord, my Savior? How am I doing there? Am I obedient? Am I doing what I want to do? Um, do I praise God with my life, with my behavior, the way I conduct myself? How about this? How am I loving my family? How am I loving my family? How am I loving my wife? How am I loving my son? How am I loving my parents? How are you loving your children? How are you loving your spouse? How are you loving your friends? I'm talking about that inner circle, like your close friends, the people you confide in, the people you trust, you, you share things with. How are you taking care of those folks? What about folks you work with? How are you loving them? What about people that we interact with? What kind of example are we setting? Are we ambassadors for Christ, as Paul says? Are we, are we setting a good example? Um, I, had a, I listened to this interview recently. There's a bad language in it, I'll just tell you. But uh, I've got a picture. Many of you know this guy, Shaquille O'Neal. He was a great basketball player. He's a center. He was dominant in the Hall of Fame. He's a very savvy businessman. And uh, so I was listening to this interview, and these guys were talking about his life. And he had a lot of uh, trials early on. He managed to, he's a, he's a mountain of a man. He did great in basketball. You remember his, his dominance there. But he said this. This was the most meaningful part of the interview to me. And one of the guys, he said, um, I remember that time when I was in legal trouble. And Shaq, if you know, he's always kind of been on the, the, the periphery of law enforcement. So he helped him out. He made some calls. He, he stood up for, for uh, the, this, this guy that was conducting the interview. And he just paused real quick. And he just paused for a minute and he said, uh, I've got this quote here. He says, you have to take care of people. I know what that means. You know, I know what that means. And you know what that means. And there's people in this room right now that have taken care of me. And they've taken care of my family. And you remember those people. You, you remember people who have taken care of you. And they were there for you. And other people may have just kind of cut and run and abandoned you, but they had a word of encouragement for you. They supported you in some way, um, and you were up against it. But I'm telling you, if you want, if you want First Christian Church and, and, and God's church to be winsome and attractive and reach people, you take care of people. You, we fulfill our calling by loving people. Start with your family. Love your family well. Love your spouse well. Love your children well. Love your grandchildren. Love your friends. Love people. Take care of people. Do that. Take care of people. That, that's one way we deal with this what's next question. Uh, I love 1 John 3.18. You should have this on your notes page. Uh, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions. With actions. And in truth, I see somebody who needs some help and just go help them. Holy Spirit convicts you, prompts you, impresses upon you. Man, someone just go help them. Help them. You don't have to wait on an invite. You don't have to wait for a go-ahead. Somebody says, hey, don't you do that. You do it. I need to do it. Just take action. Love, love with our actions uh, and, and in truth. Um, I come back. It's interesting the Apostle Peter says this, 1 Peter 2.12. Live such good lives among the pagans. These, these are folks that are not in Christ. That, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. We love people. Okay, and that, that, that makes a difference. That makes a difference. Um, I love Jesus. He's the master teacher, Luke chapter 10. Many of you know this. It's a parable. It's an earthly story that it, it really conveys and it drives home a heavenly meaning. It's the, it's the, the story of the Good Samaritan. Remember this? There's a man, Jesus says. He, see, he was asked by this guy who was religious, what's the greatest commandment? And he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. He says, well, who's my neighbor? Who should I consider my neighbor? So he, he tells this parable. So there's a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And on the road, he encounters some robbers. The robbers beat him. They strip him of his clothes. Uh, scripture says that they, they left him half dead. 
So what happens? Well, you have um, a priest who comes by. He's on the path, and um, he goes to the other side. He doesn't do anything to help him. And then a Levite comes by. These are both uh, considered prominent religious people. So the Levite comes by. He doesn't do anything. He goes to the other side. But then the Samaritan comes along, and the Samaritan in society in that day were despised. They were thought to be lowly and all of these things. Well, what's the Samaritan do? He bandages his wounds. He provides the wine and oil. He puts this man who had been robbed on his donkey. He goes to the inn. He pays for his lodging. He says to the innkeeper, he says, look, if he has any other expenses, just charge them to me. So then Jesus comes back to the man and he says, which one is the neighbor? He says, well, is the, the last one, the Samaritan. He says, you're, you're right in saying that. He says, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. What's the message for us? We, we need to fulfill our calling uh, by loving people. Uh, the Apostle John says that, the, and, and he's recording Jesus' words here, that my people, my disciples, will be recognized for their love for one another. So if we want to deal with this what's next question, we rest in Christ, we rest in Christ, and we fulfill our calling by loving people. Okay? So with that, I just want to, I want to end today with some tips as we move into 23 on how, just in practical ways, how, how we can do this. How can we rest in Christ? How can I do that? How can we fill our, fulfill our calling by loving people? The first thing is this, is to set a goal. That's, well, that's novel. <laughs> set a goal, okay. Uh, I, I came across a study recently psychologist, uh, Dominican University uh, in, in California, and 270 participants. And the aim of the study was goal setting. And this was one of the big takeaways from the study. Individuals are 42% more likely to achieve their goal. They write it down. They write it down. So if I want to rest in Christ, well, how can I do that? How can I spend time with the Lord? How can I lean into his grace and his goodness and, and, and lean on his promises? Uh, Perhaps I need to do a better job this year of just spending time with God in Scripture. Well, how can I do that? How can you do that? Well, we have to make time. Um, if you wake up in the morning, it's a good time for you. You're an early riser. Just five minutes. Would you be willing to do that? Write it down. Just write that one thing down. What about prayer? Gosh, I, I don't know when the last time I've talked to the Lord. I don't know when the last time I've gotten alone with the Lord. Uh, what about before you go to sleep at night? What about as soon as your feet hit the door floor? What about uh, your lunch break? Is that, what about your drive to work? Uh, what about when you volunteer? What about when you spend time with your kids? Is that doable? Why, well, sure. But we have to be deliberate. We have to be intentional. And, we're at, and, and this, what this suggests, we can't do this in and of our own strength, but w with God's strength, with, with his help, and, and, and let's just, let's take some ownership of this. Write it down. <laughs> write it down. Set a goal. Write it down. Well, what about loving people? Well, uh, maybe I can volunteer in an area. Maybe I can get involved in a ministry here uh, at church. Maybe I can get involved with um, uh, some type of uh, organization outside of the church that invests and pours into people and loves people. Is, th is that doable? I think so. Write that down. Just, just one thing. One thing, you write that down. Uh, but we have to take, uh, take some ownership of that. Second thing is this. This was tough. Stop doing some things. If we're going to create time and make time, we're probably going to have to stop doing th some things because I think if we all were probably surveyed in here, you'd say, hey, how's your day going? Man, I'm busy. I'm busy. I have so much going on. I I'm, I'm running in here on two wheels this morning. Uh, my work schedule's crazy. I've got two or three jobs. I have all of these obligations. I have all of these responsibilities. And it's just up to here. Uh, I barely have time during the day to, to do this, this, and this. Stop doing some things. You've probably heard the old adage, good is the enemy of what is best. Well, what do you prioritize? What do I prioritize? What, do I, what has value? What has worth? Stop doing some things. It could be something good. Uh, maybe I'm spending too much time on social media. Stop doing some of that so I can create time to, 
to love people. And I can, I can enjoy some time just to rest uh, in the Lord. Can we do that? It, it's interesting, uh, Scripture, Acts chapter 6, the apostles, many of you remember this, uh, the Grecian Jews, the widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And what did the, what did the apostles come back with? They said, it's not right. It's not right for us to neglect the ministry of the word. So what happened? Well, they selected seven men. Uh, th- these, these are individuals that most people consider the first deacons we recognize in the church. Uh, they were full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit. And the apostles were not saying... Uh, taking care of widows is not important. That's not what they said. They're, but they were assigning uh, this task, this important job, to, to seven people so that they could prioritize the ministry of the word and prayer. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not that that's not a good thing. It's a great thing. But I, in, this, in this instance, the apostles were called to do this. Well, what about some things in your life and my life? Well, we probably need to cut ties with. Some things have just ran their course. Some things are not productive. Uh, it's not an effective use of our time. So just, just stop it. Stop doing some things. We set the goal. We stop doing some things. And the Lord will help us in this. The last thing I would share with you this morning is this. Is to start today. We all at times have a tendency to be procrastinators. And I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it. No, 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 no. I'll do it next week. And next week's next month and next year, and it doesn't happen. Start today. Well, could, it, could you start reading your Bible today? Absolutely. Could you love your, your family today? Yes. Could I do that? Yes. So here, here's one of the things I came across that I really, <laughs> really like. If not now, when? Well, we'll do it next year. That, that, that may not come, right? If not now win. So I leave you with this this morning. How can we deal with the anxiety, this, this period of uncertainty that we're in, and this question that would, could reoccur in many different shapes and forms? What's next? You rest in Christ. You rest in Christ. Guess what? You, if you're in Christ, you've been acquitted. You've been exonerated. You've been declared innocent. You've been declared righteous. You're a victor. You're a new creation. God has a plan for your life. He can use you. All of that, that's, that's reality. That's not gaslighting, okay? That's not gaslighting. Uh, but set a goal. Stop doing some stuff to make time for that, and we start today. And, and the biggest decision you could make starting in this new year is saying yes to Jesus. You came this morning, maybe you didn't expect to do that, but the Holy Spirit just just keep prompting and knocking on your heart. If you even don't do it during the service, come up, talk to Joe, talk to me, talk to John, talk to Austin, talk to somebody about taking the next step um, in in your, your relationship with God by way of Christ. Because the only way you have security, the only way you can be confident, the only way you can have any type of assurance of what's ahead is being in Him, okay? Uh, Jesus says, he who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Have you ever been baptized? Why don't you do that today? If not, now when? When are you doing that? What what about joining this congregation? You've you've really felt prompted to join this team? Do that today. Maybe you need to sign up for a ministry team. Get involved here. Stop putting that off, too. Let's do that today. But uh, whatever it is, take some action. Let Let us love with actions And in truth, let us pray. Father, we praise you for this day. We thank you for Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Romans chapter 8, that we can be more than conquerors in you. Uh, We know that's the only way uh, it's possible in and of ourselves. We are nothing. You are everything. You're so worthy of our praise. Uh, We just pray that this is a good year. More people would come to know you. Your great name would be just lifted on high. You are deserving. And we praise you, Lord, that we have a future. We have an inheritance Uh, that will never perish, it will never spoil, it will never fade, and we praise you for that. Thank you for your love. Use us. Forgive me. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.